Hello friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and this is the next part of uh, the uh, video series on VMware vSphere version 6.5 and on this uh, video I'm going to show you how you can configure an ESXi host. So the first thing that we are going to see and you're uh, seeing at the moment is the uh, DCUI or Direct Console User Interface. And from this user interface, you cannot do much, but you can definitely configure um, the ESXi from here. So in the middle, you can see that uh, we can now connect uh, to this ESXi host on the IP that is obtained by DHCP. But of course, what I recommend is configuring a static IP address instead of DHCP because um, you're going to have some troubles with, with the host afterwards. In lab environments, you can leave it with DHCP, but in production, it's always uh, important to have it um, on a static. If you leave the console um, without uh, touching anything, you can see that it, it becomes a bit dark. And I've pressed enter so we can bring that uh, color into the picture. So um, on the bottom left side, you can press F2 to customize system or view the logs. And on the right side, you have the option to shut down or restart DSXI host from here. So, for example, if DSXI is not responding at all, it's always good to see if you can do it from the console. So, I'm going to press F2 and it's going to ask me to authenticate so I can connect to DSXI host. If you remember from the last video, we have configured a password for the root account and the root account is the general um, account for the ESXi so I'm going to leave it root and I'm going to specify the password and press enter so I can connect so it's going to take some time but uh, you will see that uh, it uh, took me to the system cu customization where we can go um, step by step and configure everything on this host so the first option on the top is self-explanatory. You can configure the password for uh, DSXI host. If you want, uh, you can um, change the password from here. Of course, uh, this is uh, only informative. If you need, you can change it from here. The second option is uh, currently grayed out because we will need a vCenter server to have this one available. And uh, what uh, lockdown mode means? With uh, ESXi, I think, 6, it was implemented so that if you want, you can configure the ESXi host uh, so it can uh, not be configurable from uh, this menu right here. So, in general, when you enable the lockdown mode, no users other than the VPX user have authentication permissions nor they can perform operations against the host directly. So everything needs to happen from the vCenter server so that every changes that are made are added to the vCenter server database. Because if you have, for example, vCenter server and different ESXi hosts and you make changes on the host directly, this will not be applied to the vCenter database and you will have differences in your hosts. So this lockdown mode we will uh, look uh, in more details later in the videos but you can configure the lockdown mode uh, in here as well. So the next option on the line is configure management network and this is an important one so I'm going to press enter. And within the management network, you have several um, options as well. The first one is the network adapters that you have. So you can have multiple network adapters. Um, in my case, I have a single one. But uh, for redundancy purposes, you can have uh, multiple uh, adapters that you can see um, details about more information about the adapters and what is the actual uh, status of the adapters you can um, connect them disconnect them from here so in my case i have a single one so i'm going to leave it the way it is the second option is v1 tagging so um, if you have configuration on your switches about uh, 
v1 tagging and you want to make uh, different for example the management network on a specific v1 this is the uh, the way to do it so um, in my case i don't have any v1 tagging so i'm just going to leave it uh, the way it is the ipv4 configuration so if i press enter i have several options the first one is to disable ipv4 the second one is to use a dynamic or DHCP host assigned IP4 address. And the third option is to set a static IP address. And I can use the up and down arrow keys to move through the options and hit space to select the option that I want. So when I select the static IP version 4, I have a few additional options that um, were grayed out before but now are available. So I'm going to assign a static IP address to my host, which is going to be, let's say, 21. So the subnet mask is going to stay the same and the default gateway is going to stay the same as well. So I'm going to press enter. And as soon as I make the change um, and when I try to exit, it will tell me that there were configuration changes and the, it needs to restart the actual management adapters uh, so you will see the ipv6 on the other hand is um, set on dynamic um, not sure why uh, yeah but yeah if you have an ipv6 environment you can use the ipv6 for communication as well so dns configuration from my dhcp i've uh, obtained um, the IP address of my DTP or of my domain controller server but uh, yeah if you want to change those options you can go ahead and um, yeah change the the DNS and add an uh, alternative DNS server if needed in my case I have a single domain controller so I'm going to use it so for the host name I'm going to change localhost to make it um, NLB ESXi 01. So I'm going to change the host name of uh, the ESXi and it's going to be uh, nlb-esxi-01. So I'm going to press enter and for um, custom um, DNS suffixes again this was provided by my DHCP which is the nlblab.com if I want to uh, use uh, short unqualified names yeah, this is the way for you to, to do it. So I'm going to press escape so I can remove, uh, I can move out from this menu. And again, you can see you have made changes to the host management network. Applying these changes may result in a brief network outage, disconnect remote management software or affect running virtual machines. Okay, so um, yeah, I will have to press yes, why? to restart the management network and after everything is applied it will return me to the normal uh, customization menu so the other option the restart management network is uh, self-explanatory if you have any problems with uh, connecting to the SXI host um, what you can try is you can try to restart the management network or try to test the management network so I can try to ping uh, the gateway for example and we'll see um, okay it's pinging and it's not able to resolve uh, the name um, NOBSXI01 which is okay I'll have to manually add it in my DNS and this is an important thing uh, correct me if I'm wrong but uh, I've experienced some problems with ESXi registering its host name to the actual uh, Windows DNS. So uh, what I tend to do is I actually create a record for the ESXi manually in the DNS and everything is working fine after that. So I'm going to press enter and um, go to the next option which is network restore options. So um, yeah in here um, you can go ahead and um, try to revert all network configuration to uh, the automatic ones if again something happened um, 
the ESXi host is not working at all. You try to, ch to change the settings, they are not working at all. You can use this option to restore the default options. The next one, configure keyboard. Of course, you have a large variety of uh, languages and layouts that you can use. I'm going to stick with the US default. On the troubleshooting option, uh, options, and this is an interesting one, if I press enter, um, I have several um, options that I can uh, enable or disable. So the first option is the ESXi shell. And you can see that uh, by default, this is disabled. And what does the shell uh, basically is, it's a, um, it provides essential maintenance commands that um, can be used in case of any exceptional cases uh, that cannot be handled uh, through the standard remote management or any um, command line interface tools. So you can, uh, by pressing enter, you can enable or disable this one. Um, in my case, I'm yeah, you can press enter and you can see on the right side it changed to enabled, but um, I'll press once again so I can make it um, disabled. The second one is the SSH and of course this is the um, secure shell. So using SSH of course you can connect remotely uh, to the host uh, using a uh, secure connection and make changes. This is disabled by default as well. And uh, yeah, you can configure the uh, ESXi shell and SSH timeouts from here. You can configure the idle timeout uh, before um, it logs you out from this uh, uh, menu, the direct user interface. And you can restart uh, management agents. Um, so for example, if your SSH is not working, but it's enabled from here, you can try to restart the uh, management agents. So uh, uh, they can try to um, to re-enable the, the actual connection to, to the host. Of course, um, yeah, um, you can see on the right side, it's saying that uh, restarting this in uh, during business hours can affect the services. So be careful with restarting anything in business hours. Uh, the last things that I want to show you, and these are important things, are the, you can see the system logs from here. So for example, um, while Microsoft are having the blue screen of that, um, ESXi, at least as I remember, is having the purple screen of that. So um, if something like purple screen happens where your ESXi uh, stops working because of uh, a specific bug, bug check, uh, you can go in here and you can check the um, syslog information. You can try to um, find what could be causing the um, the actual bug check to to occur. And uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, this is the <laughs> the syslog that you can you can browse through and try to find what happened with uh, with uh, the actual logs. So uh, yeah, one is for the syslog, two is for VM kernel. You can see on the on the right side. And uh, this is the support information that you can use um, if you are going to if you are going to use VMware support services. If you are experiencing problem with uh, a specific bug check that let's say that you are not familiar how to resolve and you have support from VMware, you can uh, contact them directly and provide them with uh, this support information so they can assist you. Of course, yeah, they will require for you to have a, a valid license serial number, not an evaluation one. But uh, yeah, if you have any problems, you can contact them and speak with them about about uh, resolving or how to resolve them. And the last one is warning. <laughs> so this is basically a factory reset. Um, it will uh, reset everything that you've configured on the SXI. So be caution um, about this one, this option. And uh, this is, you can test it only in lab environment if you want to see what will happen. But uh, yeah, uh, these are the the actual options that uh, if, you, if you press once uh, more escape, you will go into the uh, general menu where again, if you want, you can um, log in with the root account and password or shut down or restart uh, the actual host. 
and this is how you can configure the actual ESXi host. It's not a big deal, um, as this is only the beginning of the of the uh, tutorials. It's straightforward. Uh, I think everyone can do it. And on the next steps, what we are going to do is we are going to actually deploy and configure a virtual machine on this ESXi host that is uh, that we've already installed and uh, configured. So uh, if you like the video, hit the like button um, and subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, thank you very much for the support. I really appreciate it. I have a lot of comments with uh, nice comments with support. So again, I really appreciate it, everything that uh, uh, you do for me. So um, yeah, this was Nick, NLB Solutions. See you in the next lab.